What do you think? What? Black or black? What, this one's charcoal? Couldn't we inject a bit of colour into the proceedings? Unless you want to look like the Wicked Witch of the West? Heston. Black is so severe. What if she's done one of those psychological profiling courses and dumps you in the humorless control freak category before you open your mouth? You've seen my wardrobe. I don't really do colour. What about the number you had on last night? Oh, I hardly think that's suitable for a meeting with a social worker. Anyway, it's covered in vomit. Don't worry. I'll wear some red stilettos. Kidding. Anyway, you provide enough colour for the both of us. Oh, be honest. Uh, my waistcoat, is it too much? I, I, I don't want to seem frivolous. And, and the wine rack in the kitchen. Do you think I should hide it? Don't you think that's a little bit OTT? Well, you say that, but this is a very intensive probe. A few bottles of Cabernet Sauvignon could be the deal-breaker. Heston, at the end of the day, we have to be ourselves. There's no point in pretending. You're right. We're interviewing her as much as she's interviewing us. We could back out at any time. I thought you wanted this as much as I do. I do. I do want this. Morning. <laughs> Morning. Morning. I uh, heard about the sushi surprise. Uh, that's alcohol poisoning. Her and Dad got wasted while the Christmas party crashed and burned. Uh, it makes my night at the station look like a walk in the park. <laughs> You done okay over there? Uh, you seem to have done all right too. Secret admirer. Oh, I reckon that's Daniel just messing around. Thinks he's being funny. <laughs> I don't suppose your friends are going to share me out after you finish with the tree. Uh, I don't do manual work. <laughs> yeah, let me. Thanks. Speak to you. What's going on? You're clean and disturbed an intruder. She's not hurt. Well, not as far as I can tell. But to be honest with you, I can't get much sense out of her. What happened? A big fella pushed her to the ground before he legged it. Did you get the description? No, that is the description. Ah. Anything you can give her? Well, if the drug cabinet's still intact, presumably that's what he was after. Mm. You'll have to check and see if anything's been taken. I have got some paracetamol in my bag, if you like. Hmm? Must have been quite a party last night. Oh, uh, you have no idea. Nima, this is Dr Carmichael. I, I don't need a doctor. Please, I must get back to my work. Uh, what's all this? I'll tell you later. Uh, Ruth, about last night, I'm uh, really sorry. What did you do to her? Any chance of a glass of water? Can I go now? I'm so far behind. I don't have anything else to tell you. Mm. I'll go. Please. Y yes, you can go, but I might need to speak to you later, OK? I'm here all day. Mm. Party girl didn't make it, but what a delightful standard. She's in the loo making herself presentable. Could be a while. My tree. Traditional with a twist. What do you think? I'm bowled over. And crimson velvet for the bows. Crimson velvet bows. Trafalgar Square, eat your heart out. Patience, shall we? Yes, dear. Heston, I'm so... Oh, I don't know what to say. Please. Don't apologise. Last night took me back to my student days, a deluge of bodily fluids and a trip to casualty.
caffeine. I suppose I should be grateful that our surprise visitor didn't make off with it. He didn't seem to make off with anything. Oh, yuck. They're teaching to clean up after themselves in police school. She wants to get that cleaner to come back. She was out of here like a scolded cat. Did you notice the pendant thing? The mumbling? No. Like a mantra? Maybe she's religious. Yeah, probably begging for forgiveness for telling porkies. A big man. What kind of description is that? <coughs> it's all right, I think I've got flu. <laughs> we'll see about that, shall we? Why don't you go home? You, I'll be all right in a bit. Well, at least lie down for a bit before you fall down. Course of antibiotics should sort me out, shouldn't it? Well, your chest's clear and your temperature's normal. Yeah, I know, but I feel terrible. Well, treat yourself to a packet of paracetamol. You having a laugh? Look, I, I know Wild I'm... Wild cold symptoms require lots of fluid and plenty of rest. Well, what if it turns into bronchitis? I think we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Better safe than sorry. And big boys don't cry. If it gets any worse, I'll be happy to review my diagnosis. Well, what kind of doctor are you? The sort that doesn't dole out drugs like sweeties. <coughs> I want a second opinion. Fine, feel free to ask the receptionist on your way out. Uh, excuse me. Uh, leave it for today. It's fine. Uh, I have to, it's my job. Yeah, and it's my room. with Dr. Hassan. You're welcome. Goodbye. Okay, Was that appointment for today? Yes. Karen, I'm leaving at 5.30, as is Heston. I'm sure I mentioned it to you yesterday. <sighs> yes, yes, I did. I'm, I'm sorry, the social worker. I, 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 meant, I meant to write a note, but I forgot. I'll call her back. Um... Uh, how am I supposed to take care of the list in a day? Just because I'm going on holiday doesn't mean you have to double my workload. And what does that say? Um, the patient wanted to be left till last, so I made a note. Oh, look, look, I decide how to organise my home visits, not the patients. That way I don't end up in the middle of nowhere for my last visit. I need to buy my head off. Nima, I need to talk to you. There's been another incident at the surgery. Ruth, our receptionist, has just been attacked. Now, she's OK, but I need to confirm some details with you about the intruder. Did you...? Did you see a zombie this morning? So you did. But I have to go back to work. No, he might hurt someone. There are hundreds of staff and students on this campus. He has come for me. Why would he come for you, Nima? Because I ran away from my country. You must have been really scared. What are you running from? I'm cursed. He will not stop until his task is finished. Look, will you help me find him? Ruth said he smelled really bad. Did you notice that? Rotten flesh. I think I smelled it again in one of the rooms. Is anybody uh, home? Uh, this is Dr. Carmichael. Yeah? You? How's the cold? What do you want? This isn't Ellen Painter's room. No. Right. Oh, 
to leave. Thanks for your support. Look, if I had money, I would give it to you, but I... Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's the end of term. Oh, come on, don't be like that. I, I just want my iPod for these. Check if it's clear. Uh, where are you going? <laughs> There's been a development. Ah, yes, your intruder. Uh, I'm a little bit behind on the paperwork with that one. I take it you're busy. Could say that I've got half the team working on an attempted murder. There's been an RTA on the bypass, and the leather bridge flash has been at it again. Don't even think about it. Must be a full moon. I think you're going to have to shuffle us up your priority list. Yeah, well, I'm heading your way anyway. Someone's reported a burglary on the campus, so I'll call in, yeah. A hot pink laptop. And uh, Gucci shoes gone missing, would you believe? <laughs> that was me thinking the students were poor. So what's your development? He came back. It's all right, there's no major casualties, but I had to send Ruth home. Right, well, I'll be there as soon as I can. Yeah, thanks, bye. Come on. Oh, dear. Why don't you knock off, go get yourself something to eat? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit queasy, to be honest. What you need is a good stodgy meal, lots of carbs. <sighs> Come on, Mum, I need the energy, even if you don't. Look at that. An extravagance of coniferous magnificence. You won't mess with it. Perish the salt. Come on, you drunken reprobate. It's kebab time. Oh, Heston, um, just want to wish you and Lily luck for tonight. I don't think we may need it. Oh, you're usually so confident. Is everything all right? Well, you know, fostering, it's a big commitment. Well, don't you feel committed? Yeah, but anyone in my position would have serious doubts. Stephen. Loving and losing one child after another. It's a bit daunting. Have a good look. Oh. Look, maybe you should just give yourself up and get some proper treatment. All the treatment I need. Yeah, but you should be in hospital. Chained to a bed? I don't think so. Jake, I'm just trying to help. You want to be useful? Sell that. <sighs> What's the matter? Don't want to get your hands dirty you now, you're getting an education. I've seen you all right over the years. Now it's your turn. Just tell him the truth. We got lucky. We've got a fingerprint match on the database from the break-in. Do you recognise this man? Yes. Yes, well, he's wanted for attempted murder. And a half-decent description from you this morning, we could have caught him by now. When was this taken? Monday night, two minutes after he beat the news agent into a coma. Rob? He's zombie? Oh, please. She's not far wrong. This is a dead man walking. Look at the marks on his knuckles. The skin is scraped. That's from his assault on the news agent. But there's no evidence of swelling or infection. Today, that man looks and smells like a corpse. From Nima's description of his general condition of the state of his hand, I'd say he's developed a major infection. What kind of infection? Well, this image is three days old. That means he's gone from scraped knuckles to gangrene in 72 hours. That's a phenomenal rate of deterioration. I'd say we do have a flesh-eating monster on this campus. Just not of the zombie variety. You'll be telling me you know where he is next. I'm oh, sorry, love. It's fine. Yeah, but I wanted you to have a proper lunch. A cheese sandwich. I'll leave. It's just the smell of cooking, a whiff of chip fat, and then. Mm. That pot plant was there. I'm not going to be able to show my face in that chippy again. Oh, great. Ruth's gone homesick. And she's been attacked by a zombie. Has she been taking her medication? Imogen Hollins. Open up, please. Sergeant Hollins, Leatherbridge Police. Do you mind if uh, I... What's this about? We're looking for someone. 
Friend of yours? Uh, yeah, it's my half-brother, Jake Barnes. Where is he? Come on, we know he's been here. I don't know, I thought he was still inside. It's a bit whiffy in here, and Jake's not smelling too good either, by all accounts. Yeah, it's a, it's a binge, um, I missed the cleaning this morning. It's your laptop? Yeah. Really? You don't strike me as the pastel pink kind of guy. You mind if I turn it on? You got a warrant? It'll be too late if it's NF. NF? Necrotising fasciitis. Oh, good. You've heard of it. Did you know that it can get through three centimetres of flesh in an hour once it really gets going? The hospital is on alert. Are you winding me up? Mm, no, this is not funny. I could show you some case studies if you'd like. They're a bit gruesome. It's just an infection. You'd know that better than us, wouldn't you? Because you've seen it close up. I'm only guessing. Gangrene, most likely, and that means it's got into his bloodstream. Yeah, well, he's got antibiotics, so it's fine. Forget about it. He needs intravenous medication, and even then, the infected flesh needs to be cut out. Yeah, well, uh, I think you're just trying to scare me. We'll see about that, shall we? Without immediate medical attention, he'll probably be dead in a couple of days. Multiple organ failure. Good luck. Don't go anywhere. Nice work. I wasn't bluffing. You need to find him fast. May I go now? My shift is finished. Yeah, of course. OK. He won't get far in his condition. He's on this campus somewhere. Jake, is that your name? treatment very soon. You will die. You're a cleaner. I heard the doctor. You have a serious illness. Look at your hand. See how much worse it's gotten. Your flesh is rotting. Can can't you smell it? Let me go and get help for you, eh? All right, okay. As parties go, it wasn't brilliant, but I do think that you should focus on the positives. What positives? Oh. Well, um, the, the bleen is quite nice. Quite <laughs> nice? <laughs> Karen, you're back. I can't tell you how happy I am. I've been here all day. No, there's been an imposter skulking behind reception until this very moment. I wasn't that bad, was I? Do you know what? I am never going to have a party ever again. Oh. You're cruel, you lot. I really tried. Turn right Great. 200 Excellent. yards ahead Brilliant. and then left. Thank you very much. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on! Oh. There isn't a left. There... Come on, there's no left. There's... There... Oh, there's no left! The purpose of this meeting is to find out more about what you can offer a child. Obviously, we need to make sure that your home's suitable and that you have the time and space to care for a child. We'll also want to check that you have the right skills. And of course, it's an opportunity for you to ask questions about fostering, raise any concerns you may have. What will happen to him? Looking at the state of his arm, I think he'll be in hospital for a while. And then it's up to the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service. About earlier. I'm sorry, I was a bit harsh.
I was wondering about that. Some kind of charm. To protect from evil. I bought it from a priest before I ran away. You never told me what you were running from. When I was ten, I was initiated into a Falpel convent. My parents couldn't pay for the ceremony, so they sold me. I was put to work on a coffee plantation. My master, he took a drop of my blood and said, if I ever tried to escape, he'd use it to hunt me down. I was a slave for five years. Here, have it. Don't you need it? Yeah, I served its purpose. You think it protected you from Jake? No. He gave me the courage to run. Knowing the truth saved me from Jake. What if you don't believe in it anymore? Why are you giving it to me? heart attack was a terrible shock at the time and uh, made me reassess my priorities, but uh, I'm in rude health now. It's not going to count against us, is it? You'll need to have a full medical examination as part of the application process, but providing that's all clear, that's fine. It seems that you've been through quite a turnaround in your life too, Lily, from juvenile tearaway to committed medical professional. That's why it's so important for me to do this, to give something back. Being fostered gave me the opportunity to get off that road. I can see how your experiences could prove invaluable for some of our more difficult children. Heston, how would you feel about taking on a challenging or disturbed youngster? Well, I mean, a child is just a child. I mean, rules, structure, boundaries, work wonders for me. Applied with patience and empathy, of course. You know, I mean, I'm just saying a child needs to know where they stand, what's expected. Some of these children are angry and confused. They feel unloved, unwanted. They may not perhaps respond well to the kind of discipline that you experienced as a child. Well, I think I turned out pretty well. Well, discipline really only works when underpinned with love, trust and respect. Otherwise, it's just tyranny, isn't it? fostering change your relationship? Of Absolutely. Well, we feel that our differences are part of the strength of our relationship. When couples' views and interests are so very different, it can put a stress on the bond between them and with the addition of a particularly needy child. Well, I realise we may not be everybody's idea of a perfect partnership, but um, it works for us. Opposites attract. We may not always be in unison, but we are in harmony. And surely that's good for a child, to see that difference doesn't always lead to discord and that alternative views and beliefs can be embraced and celebrated. I must say, I'm very impressed. The amount of thought you've put into this, your professional experiences, and the fact that Lily is willing to go part-time. New relationships are a harder sell. It's a commitment issue, really. Will this couple stay together long term? The panel need to be convinced. But then you have so many things in your favour. I'm sure we can make an excellent case. So, we'll be able to proceed? There are a few more steps, of course. Preparation groups, a chance to learn about the fostering process. You'll have a head start there. <laughs> If only we had more prospective foster carers of your calibre. Thank you so much. We will put our hearts and souls into this. I'm sure. I'll see myself out. 
Did I do all right? Oh, Heston. What? You were a colossus. Let's push the boat out. Champagne, Chateaubriand, creme brulee, celebration à la française. No, I'm too excited to eat. Look, I'll make you a sandwich. We'll go upstairs to the spare room and start preparing for our new arrival. Yes, but... I'll just get the tape measure. Um, if we go with a single bed, I think we'd probably fit a desk in there. Heston Carter. Um, I'm afraid he's not here this afternoon. I could fit you in. Another break in. Christmas cake eaten, more presents unwrapped, and his neighbour's kid reported hearing sleigh bells and seeing something small and red running away. Heston, I'm going to take a leaf out of your book and tell you I love you. For full details of the first.